Hi, Mike. Yeah. Hello, thank you for spending your time and answering my question. And my first one is list three adjectives to describe reincarnationist papers. So um, three adjectives. Um, dark, moody, and existential. What was your writing schedule when you wrote the novel? I would try to write every day, Mike. Um, and I, I try to write a thousand words a day. That's my goal. Um, anything north of that, like 1200, 1300 is really good, but a thousand words a day is what I try to do at a minimum. And do you write like in the daytime or nighttime or it doesn't matter? So now I write in the mornings. Uh, in the past, I used to like to write in the late mornings and the afternoons, but now uh, I feel like I'm most productive uh, at the first part of the day and like my, my head is clearest and I have the most energy for thinking and, and, uh, and doing the writing, Mike. What was your favorite scene to write and make this as spoiler free as possible? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, I, so, so the way the book is written, it's written as a, as a first person account with some historical flashbacks from, uh, other characters and my favorite things to write were the historical flashback scenes. And I think my favorite flashback scene is, um, from, um, 17th century France. Uh, in, the, in the court of uh, Louis the 15th, I think it was, and when they were building the Palace of Versailles. I love that scene. And did you have other titles in mind besides the reincarnationist papers? If so, what were they? Um, I had originally wanted to call it the reincarnationist, but there was another author out there who took that title before I could publish the book. And so I decided to change it to the Reincarnationist Papers because it is a series of three notebooks. And from both your self-published novel and from the new edition, which you currently have with you, I believe. I do. You, okay. And could you please leaf through um, each of them, then point at the random place and read the full sentence and the page number? So I'm going to do this for the, uh, the new North American edition of the Reincarnationist Papers, which is uh, going to be the movie Infinite, starring Mark Wahlberg. And this book will be available at all booksellers on May 4th. So I'm going to turn to a random page. And I'm going to read. Louis tried closing his eyes against the pain as the surgeon worked, but every time he did, he saw only Jobert's pale, tired eyes and his blinking, unbelieving eyes against the backs of his own eyelids. And that's, actually from, that's actually from the favorite scene that I talked about earlier. I just thumb right through that, to that. Now let me try it. Now this is the original self-published edition of the Reincarnationist Papers, and this is the one that had the reward to readers in there, that was found by a reader and uh, and helped it uh, be turned into a movie. So I will um, turn here, and I will pick a place. Uh, it says. Um, Perhaps Bando really had flown in that moment of grace. And that's the sentence. That's the whole sentence. And what page number is that? That's 208 in this edition, page number 208. Okay. So I read about your interesting method you use to get your book discovered by Hollywood. Could you retell it here? Yes, absolutely. So what I did is um, I tried to find an agent to get the book published traditionally back in 2008 and 2009. And um, I was not successful. Uh, I met a lot of nice agents who liked the book, but weren't exactly sure how they would uh, sell it to a publisher. 
So I decided to self-publish the book in 2009. And, and Mike, since I had already decided that I wanted to work with an agent and was willing to pay 10 or 15% of whatever I would make on the book to that agent, uh, I decided to try sort of a, a unique technique from my, from my day job. And my day job is I work at Oracle Corporation uh, in Silicon Valley. Um, I, tried to, I tried to use something called crowdsourcing. And crowdsourcing is where you um, give other people the opportunity to help and do some work. Uh, like Wikipedia is a great example of crowdsourcing, right? We all contribute to it and we edit each other's work and it ends up being uh, you know, the, the reference tool we use today. So what I did is I married those two ideas, Mike. I, I, des I decided, well, if I wanted to work with an agent and I was willing to pay 10 or 15% of whatever my earnings were going to be on the book, why not open it up and offer that agent's commission as a reward to any reader of the book who read this older version of the book and loved it and could make an introduction to some publisher in New York, some Hollywood producer that loved the book and would want to see it made into a movie or would help me get it published. And it sounds like the craziest idea in the world uh, right up until it works. And it did work. It took about a year and a half later, I got an email on Thanksgiving Day and it was an assistant to a Hollywood director who found a copy of this book, believe it or not, Mike, he found it in a hostel in Nepal, in Kathmandu, Nepal. He read the book, loved it, and he emailed me and he said, hey, man, I just read this book and it's got this crazy reward in it. Uh, has anybody claimed the reward? Because I can totally see this book being a movie and I will help you get this book made into a movie. And his name was Rafi. And sure enough, Rafi Crone uh, came back, gave me a contract for, uh, which is basically a finder's agreement. And he set to work to get the reincarnationist papers made into a movie. And it took him seven years, but he never quit. And he kept working at it. He went to different studios. And eventually it was sold as the adapted screenplay Infinite. And it was sold to Paramount Pictures in 2017. And in 2019, Paramount started shooting the movie and I paid Rafi the reward uh, that, that was in this version of the book. I paid him that reward at the end of 2019. And then COVID hit and the movie was delayed and then delayed again. The movie will be out September 24th of this year. And the movie's called Infinite. It stars Mark Wahlberg, Chiwetel Ejiofor, Dylan O'Brien, uh, Toby Jones, Sophie Cookson, and I'm really excited about going to see that movie. And I just want to ask you, find out or figure out how that book was in Nepal? No, it's, it's a great question, Mike, but I never figured it out. Um, you know, the only thing that I can think of and Rafi can think of is if you've ever traveled internationally, like a backpacker, right? A lot of young travelers go to, you know, from hostel to hostel and they take their books that they're reading. And then when they're done, they just leave them at the hostel. And we think that somebody had picked up this book somewhere and had left it there. And then when Rafi found it, he was intrigued by the title and read it. And that's how the whole story started. That's very interesting. It was just meant to be, obviously, for him to find yeah. it in such a, a faraway country. So my exactly. next, yeah. So my next question is: um, Could you summarize the actual notes that you left for those who read the book from the self-published book? Yes. So um, the actual notes are. Hang on, I have this pulled up here as a way for me to find this. Hang on just a moment. So you can actually find the actual reward on my website, Mike. Uh, it's at ericmykrantz.com. And the last, uh, it's spelled E-R-I-C-M-A-I-K-R-A-N-Z. But the reward basically is this. It says at the top of the page, reward. 
And then I began, as the author of this work, I offer you, the reader, the opportunity to redeem a cash reward for introducing this work to any literary agent, publisher, or Hollywood producer that offers an acceptable contract for this work. The reward is offered, the reward offered is 10% of any initial book advance or option contract for film up to a maximum of $10,000. And uh, I, I actually ended up paying Rafi the full amount of $10,000 as that 10% commission once Paramount started shooting the movie. And I just wanna say obviously congratulations on the novel being made into a feature film by Paramount. Um, what are your thoughts about um, Antoine Fuqua directing the film and the name change for the film adaptation? Yeah, so um, uh, I like the name of the movie. Um, I think that it fits the adapted screenplay that Ian Shore uh, wrote for the movie. Uh, and I love Antoine Fuqua's work. Uh, if you, you know, if I've seen, uh, obviously Training Day, we've all seen Training Day. I've seen both of the Equalizer movies. Uh, I've seen Southpaw. I've seen um, the Magnificent Seven remake. What I, I, what I really like about him, even though he, you know, he makes a lot of action pictures, is that uh, he really spends a lot of time on character development. And all good stories in my mind are character driven stories. And he really spends the, the required amount of time to develop those characters so that you care about what happens to them in the movies that he directs. He's really an amazing artist that way. And I really just appreciate uh, his artistic touch. And I'm really looking forward to what he's going to be able to do with Infinite. Were you ever on set or made a cameo or was involved in any way in the film adaptation? If so, could you talk about your experience? Yeah, so I did get to go on set. I went on set in the fall of 2019 and uh, where they were shooting the film at the time was in a small village Northwest of London uh, in the UK. And they were on location at, uh, at an old Rothschild family mansion. And they were filming there. I got to meet Mark Wahlberg. Uh, I got to meet Antoine Fuqua and, sp and speak with him for about 30 minutes. And that was amazing. He's such a cool guy. Uh, and we, we actually have a lot in common. Uh, I got to meet the producers, uh, Lorenzo de Bonaventura and Mark Veradian. And it was just an amazing, surreal experience to see all of those people working there and all of this equipment and investment for an idea that is spawned from my book. It was really, it was really out of this world. And is, was there any moment that you talked to the screenwriter about the book or you just trust him totally? Well, uh, both actually. So the screenwriter is Ian Shore. He's the, the, uh, the primary screenwriter. And uh, I spoke with Ian uh, at the very beginning when, um, when, when Ian uh, read the book and loved the book and then wrote his own adaptation of it for Infinite. Um, I spoke with him uh, a couple of times about my book, sort of what the inspiration was for my book, where I plan to uh, take the, the next editions of the book, the, 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 uh, the second installment and the third installment of the book, which I'm working on right now. And then, uh, and then Ian and I have become friends. And uh, Ian actually took me to Burning Man in 2019. Uh, I was, uh, I was um, sort of invited into Burning Man, uh, into their theme camp by Ian Shore. And, and Ian and I are still friends today. And would this be a spoiler or not? Did he make a cameo? You know, I, I did not. I did not. It's not a spoiler. Um, I was interested in doing it, but I thought about asking Antoine Fuqua, but it's, it would just have been so disruptive. And when I saw the way that he was working on set, 
um, you know, because he's the director and, and, you know, there's probably two or 300 people working there and they're all working at his direction as the director. And this man was like a general in the field, right? Uh, high energy, you know, pointing, you go here, you go here. He was on top of everything at all times. And you could tell that he had just really planned out his days working. And that if I had come in and said, oh, hey, I'd like to be, you know, in a cameo and stand off the side, it would have really um, sort of messed, messed with his artistic flow and, um, to see Antoine working, uh, he's fairly, uh, imposing and intimidating. He's really, he, he's really something to see. Maybe in the next installment that could happen. Maybe, so. maybe. I like, I like that idea, Mike. And what are your thoughts on like Mark Warburg on um, Chita and uh, Edge of Four and um, Dylan O'Brien and Toby Jones as cast members in a film that's based on your work. So, yeah, I love this question. So uh, let's start at the top. Let's start with Mark Wahlberg. Um, I, I, I like Mark, Mark Wahlberg's work a lot. Um, but if you think about it, he's got a really wide range of what he's able to do. He's, he's made a lot of really good action movies. He's done a lot of really funny comedies, but he's done a lot of really dramatic roles that have really moved me. If you think about things like The Departed, for example, or even Shooter, which was, uh, you know, maybe an action movie or The, or the Fighter that was uh, an action movie depicting the life of Mickey Ward. Uh, those are actually like really like first class dramatic roles. So I mean, he's just such a talent, right? And you think all the way back to his musical career, he's just so talented. He can really do anything. So I'm really excited that he's in the movie. I'm really very thankful to Mark, to Chiwetel, to Toby, to Dylan, to Antoine, and everybody else that's involved, to Ian Shore, that they chose my humble book, The Reincarnationist Papers, as the basis for a project that they all worked on, because these guys are in high demand. They can work on anything that they want, and I'm just really very humbled that they that they chose this project. Um, I, I love Chiwetel Edgy for All you have to do is is go back and review some of his roles. Um, you know, Serenity is a favorite because uh, he's such a bad guy in that movie. Uh, but like, like I just icy cold bad guy. Um, I really like, um, I, I haven't seen that many things that Dylan O'Brien's been in, but I, I've, I'm a huge fan of Toby Jones. And I just love the things that he's been in. I think he was in Whispering Pines. Uh, and I just really love that sci-fi show and everything that he's in. I just, I tend to really love him uh, in, 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 in what he does uh, in his roles. Yeah, he was also in the Hunger Games and of course the Harry Potter movies. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And did you know that um, this is Chiotel's second movie that was based on a self-published novel? Do you know the first self-published novel? That he was in. no, no. What is it? It was *The Martian* by um, was authored by Andy Weir. That's right. That's right. You know, Andy Weir did publish, uh, did self-publish his book first, and and got in in his readers. You know, and you know, he 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 in his readers helped contribute and helped him edit some of the hard science parts of it. In a way, that's in a way, Mike. That's sort of crowdsourcing in the same way that I did it. Uh, but, you know, he did it with uh, maybe a lot more panache and a lot more success than I've had so far. And what was the best advice he ever received about writing? Wow, this is a great question. Um, I think the best advice about writing uh, is something that I just got in the last couple of months, and it's from Jerry Seinfeld from you know the comedian of Seinfeld thing. Uh, he talks about how you have to be two different personalities when you're writing. When you're actually looking at a blank page and you have to get things out of your head onto the blank page, he says you have to be you know this really supportive, nurturing person that says, Mike, you can do it. 
get it on the page, keep going, just keep writing. Don't care if it's good or bad, just keep going, keep going. And then when you look at it on the next day, he said, this, this may, uh, this may uh, be an older reference, but he said, you've got to be Lou Gossage Jr. from An Officer and a Gentleman, uh, the movie with Richard Gere, where Lou Gossage Jr. played a drill sergeant who was super mean and super detail oriented. And he said, he said, you've got to be that drill sergeant on the second day in order to be a good editor and make sure that what you wrote the day before is good enough to be in a book, good enough to be commercial quality. And I just keep going back to that advice over and over again, that you can't be too hard on yourself when you're doing the initial writing but after you've written it, you've got to be your own uh, like toughest critic to make sure that it's really good. That's an excellent advice. I and, think so too. Yeah. And have you ever considered writing a screenplay? I have. I have considered writing a screenplay. Uh, it's very. I actually wrote one a long time ago, and it's not very good, which is why nobody's ever seen it. But it's very different kind of writing to writing a novel. And in a way, it's much more restrictive because it's very difficult to have, you know, internal dialogue, internal monologue, understand what the character's thinking or what their motivations are. Everything's got to be visual and it has to be shown and demonstrated to the end consumer, the movie viewer. And it's, it's, it's much more challenging than writing a novel in some ways, because you have to uh, you have to deal with those restrictions. But it's 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 a bit more liberating in some ways because you'll have a Toby Jones, a Chiwetel Chiwetel Ejiofor that will be there to fill in some of the gaps and add some of the color that they're going to add in a collaboration that you just don't get in a novel. So, which author, dead or alive, would you love to? invite over and chat with. Wow. It would probably be Ernest Hemingway. You know, there's a, there's a great um, Ken Burns uh, series on PBS right now about Ernest Hemingway. Uh, he seems like, you know, just a very interesting person. He's obviously one of the strongest writers in the English language, in my opinion. And um, yeah, I'd really like to have him over and have dinner with him. What was your favorite novel as a teenager? Wow. As a teenager, I really liked the, um, the early Tom Clancy books, like uh, Red Storm Rising and Hunt for Red October. Um, and I read those when I was in high school. And I really just love those books. Um, I, I haven't picked those up in so long, but um, I really just love his writing. I mean, he's sort of, you know, arguably the inventor of the techno thriller. Um, and um, God, I just, I would just remember getting lost in those books and just staying up, you know, into, into, the, into the early morning hours reading those books. And what was the first book that made you think for days after reading it? The first book that made me think for days after reading it was something that I read when I went to university and I went to the University of Colorado and I studied Russian literature. And the book that really um, did it for me was sort of a more obscure Russian literature work called A Hero of Our Time by Mikhail, Mikhail Lermontov. And that one, that book, I still pick it up and read it probably once every two years. And there's just something about the voice and the actions of the characters that just still speaks to me to this day, Mike. And this is my last question. What is your favorite TV show that is currently on air or streaming? Um, I have a new favorite that I've just discovered uh, uh, a week ago. It's uh, Lupin. I don't know if you know this one, it's on Netflix. It's, it was actually a Netflix original, but it came out of France. And it's based on 
uh, an adaptation of the novels about uh, Arsène Lupin uh, in the 1920s in France about a gentleman detective. And um, I've, I crushed all of season one in like three nights. And I can't wait for season two to come out.